What is up, guys? We are back here with another Market Watch video today. First of all, though, we are starting off with the ban list. So the ban list is kicking off a lot of weird and interesting things in the market, which we will see. But in case you didn't know, here is the ban list. It was released or went effective, at least, I should say, two days ago, April 15. You guys can check this uh, in the website. The links are in this, this in the description. Make sure you make sure you bookmark the website. Website is fast, clean. I mean, there's awesome suggestions. Look at how fast everything loads. There's no ads. I'm not tracking you and all that good stuff. Anyway, so back to this ban list, right? Around the floor got hit, which yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about the ban list. But what I do want to say is Konami, a fan named Barone gave Konami an out on actually taking... Um, responsibility, if you will, on creating really broken archetypes that do not lock into their perspective archetypes, essentially, right? So kind of sucks, but it, it, that is the trend that we're going to always see that the generic cards will be getting hit over the overpowered or overtuned uh, archetypes. Like, I, I don't want to say Sword Soul, but Sword Souls don't really lock you. There's not that many, there's, there's not that uh, harsh restrictions on swords are like it's lives you into worm monsters in, in certain cases whoop de do there's a lot of good worm monsters right another another archetype cash tira does not lock you into any archetype uh, for the most part actually yeah it doesn't lock you into cash tira monsters which enabled you to use diablos and then diablos got hit you see so you guys know i think you guys know what i'm talking about i don't want to stress too much about this the other thing is that link karibo and thunder dragon colossus got banned and then unbanned respectively so let's see what that's doing to the market actually before that let's do speed dual tournament uh not tournament pack i got tournament packs in the in the brain guys if you guys haven't seen my latest video check it out uh we opened up speed dual tournament pack five which is a pretty decent tournament pack anyway so speed dual gx midterm destruction mini box a lot of really really good choices by konami they're not all heroes, and they're not all necessarily just like... Uh, actually, most of them are, did get released in the GX era, except MST, I think. And Baby Sarasaurus might have not been in the GX era. Although, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe he was. But holy shit, these cards are amazing. In particular, Elemental Hero Prisma, because this card can fit so many decks, not just hero monsters. Yes, it works really well with Rainbow Neo. So if you guys don't know, Prisma ha is like a special fusion substitute card where it actually takes the name of a specific card, which uh, gets, ba gets uh, by a lot of the restrictions imposed on fusion substitute monsters. So for example, when you try to summon Rainbow Neos, you cannot use a fusion substitute monster like Hex fusion uh hex light fusion or whatever the hell the card is uh because it specifically says that you need a an ultimate crystal monster since that rock is not an ultimate crystal monster you cannot use it right but with elemental hero prisma it actually takes the name of the card that that you're trying to use as a fusion material so it works in rainbow neo with rainbow neos it works with you bell very well actually you a, a lot of you bell decks should probably use this especially if you're going to be mixing you bell with heroes which is really easy to do because we got my boy klugs which is an elemental hero you bell card not nah, mean anyways also in gate guardian it's a really good card people were using it as a tech card now it's a really nice seeker rare i don't know man i'm eyeing this if it goes down to like three bucks I would say invest heavily on it, but I don't know if that's going to ever be the case because there's already 21 listings and that is pretty crazy. Anyways, I feel like Elemental Hero Neos buying this even at a dollar is a no go because you can actually get this as a quarter century rare for about the same price. Like if, if it's not a dollar, it's like within two dollars, right? So I would say skip buying neos and uh from this set and buy it as a quarter century rare from the 2023 tins and yeah so besides that fossil dina is probably gonna be money relatively soon because of course if you guys don't know you can play these in both speed duel and the tcg format so if you want like a really cool although this is gonna get, get reprinted as well because we are getting a new uh printing of light of destruction so hmm you know, it's, it's iffy. I would still say this card is probably going to go up a little bit in value in the long term because we're still in the speed duel world, right? Like, it, it, there's not a lot of 
cards that have been printed in Speed Duel even now. So the fact that there's, I think, two copies, this one and the common one, if I'm not mistaken, then it just it just means that I wonder if there's like an easy way to search that actually. So it just means that there's going to be less availability in the speed duel world. So it's definitely gonna, it's definitely worth investing. I feel like Baby Sarasaurus is probably not like it'll probably go up a little bit in the short term, but in the long term, I don't think so because there's not that many Dino decks that are out there that I remember seeing in speed duels. So I don't know, man, but definitely that and miracle fusion is definitely worth investing and taking an eye on. Anyway, so Ma magnificent mavens. Oh my God, this set is crazy. So I was correct. The, the, the other, the next buyout. So the, the, we had buyouts on, I think sky strikers, we had buyouts on some other cards. And then I said, you know what? The next buyout is going to be Sword Souls because that's just what the trends were saying, baby. And I look at trends. That's what I do. And I was correct. Sword Souls are going up in value. The uh, Sword Soul Emergence, I think, was a $5 card and not that long ago. Now we're going to 7 maybe 10 bucks. So that's definitely uh, something to look at. The Sword Soul Moye. Also, I mean, uh, you can see the trajectory there. It's been sitting at 10 for a while, though, for like a month. So we'll see if it actually keeps going. But what I have seen recently is that uh, Supreme Sovereign ching -a, -ling a ling here has gone up tremendously recently. And I think the reason why is Barone is banned. So now people in the Sword Soul community need to find a void. They need to uh, fill a void, I should say. For a level 10 monster, and that's what this one is doing. Yes, I'm aware that mo more most people were running this in a Source Soul deck, but the people that weren't now need something in that deck. And this is, uh, first of all, in archetype, and second of all, it's not that bad. Like it's a really good card. I don't know why a lot uh, a lot of people. Well, I shouldn't say I don't know why. Barone is a really good card for sure. But usually, what I see in Source what's what I see Source Soul players do is a rush Barone. Instead of rushing this, and I don't know, man, I it's this this card is really good and it, it is situational, of course, but it, it's a really good card. People are realizing it. It's going up in value. We'll see. Thirty listings. I think it's going to go up a little bit more. Shakes Lao is also going up in value because um, besides the the um, Barone being banned, right? We also actually are getting something unbanned, and that is Arc Nemesis Protos, which is searchable in um, in Sword Souls. So a lot of people are actually kind of looking into Sword Souls and uh, kind of eyeing it as the next fun deck, right? I don't think people are really considering Sword Souls to be like really that meta. Because they didn't really get much new support. Like they they got something removed from their their repertoire right barone and then they got something added to it in in the case of protos or whatever the hell the guy's name is so i feel like it's still kind of it didn't really change much but people now that they have a new tech to play with or play around it's gonna people are gonna be interested in it you know what i mean so Besides that, Epilosa, Bow the Goddess, has kind of went, it's going up in value, but I would say sell this card, because this is actually going to be reprinted very soon in the Rarity, Rarity Collection 2, which is actually, that's coming up. Rarity Collection 2 is coming up May 24th, guys, so get rid of any... Any Epilosas that you have, especially from this one, it makes it make a cool eight bucks. That that's just easy money. Skill drain I did see go up in value slightly after the ban list, and I believe the reason why is because skill drain was banned or summon limit was banned, I should say. So people are looking for another way to um, hold the floodgates, to preserve the floodgates, whatever. Insert cool witty floodgate metaphor there infinite impermanence i mean it's been trucking along it has been printed to death actually but people i mean it's a good card a good card is a good card is a good card and yeah five bucks it's probably gonna go up a little bit more unless it gets printed again which uh, I, I wouldn't doubt konami printing it again to be honest because they're kind of done with it right they've they've held off on printing it for so long and now it's just like printed to death who the fuck cares at this point um what else is here? Pharaoh Rares. Holy shit, man. Secret Rare, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, uh, Pharaoh Rare. $450. People bought this out. 
relatively recent because there were like uh, at least five listings last time I saw it. And then the ultra rare, if you have a cool two two stacks, bro, that's uh, that it could be yours for two thousand dollars. Don't get it though, please. Just do not get it. It's not worth that much money. But I was calling this out for quite a while. Feral rares are just that rarity. A lot of I've seen some YouTubers saying like, "Oh, feral rares suck." And no, my good sir, you suck. I'm just kidding. But I mean, come on. Feral rares are just really fun. They harken back to the DM era. They're very obscure, very rare. So, of course, we're going to do well long term. Like, it just didn't make sense why people were trashing it. You know, you know what I mean? Um, especially with how, how scarce it is. Like, there's, it, only two products got this. And what is it? Like, 30 cards in total? 30 different cards? If that were printed in this rarity it's just common sense but uh let's see besides that let's move on relinquished anima holy shit so because my boy link Rebo was banned or got banned we had we have a, a void in the link one department especially for level one monster support and that is my boy relinquished anima i have been talking about this card for days for weeks for months on twitter I have been tracking this for so long. It's been sitting at five bucks for the longest time. As soon as the ban is hit, what bam, ten bucks, boy, I better pay you up. This card is pretty decent, but I would say um, I don't think it's gonna get printed anytime soon. A, B, it's not that good. I think at ten dollars, it's 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 about it's about right at ten bucks. If people keep buying it after that then I don't know about that. Because, uh, yes, I'm aware Snake Eyes has usage for this card and, and a lot of level one decks. But what other level one decks are using Relinquished Anima? Or what, uh, I guess I, I should rephrase that. What level one decks are out there besides Snake Eye, right? So I would say in the, in the short term, I do expect this card to go up in value. But once people realize that, or I guess I shouldn't say once people realize when, when people, when, when the price hits a certain point, and that's probably going to be around 12 bucks, I think people are going to realize like, hey, should I be running this? Should I be buying this? Should I be investing in this? It's also a one of in, in, a, in a deck, if that. So it is what it is. Okay, so Thunder Dragon Colossus got unbanned. So that just means every other Thunder Dragon in existence has to go up in value. And if you have any of these guys, please check your closet and sell these. Because it's bound to get reprinted. If Konami is not just going to unban something and not print uh, a copy. If they're not going to get their money, money's worth, right? They will print this somehow, some way in 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 a in a pack. Also, the OG Thunder Dragon was just reprinted in the twenty fifth anniversary boosters. So really, I think we just need the newer the newer cards in particular. I did see. Let's see if we can find it. Actually, there was there were some cards from the twenty nineteen tin that are insanely insanely expensive. Let's go. Let's go there. Actually. Because if you have, oh boy, no, not not the promos. So if you have, if you've opened up any anything from the 2019 um, pack, tin, I should say, the, the mega pack, look at your bulk and make sure you get rid of these cards. Some faster than others. The Thunder, Dra Thunder Dragon Dark, I, I feel like 20 bucks is good. If you can get rid of this at 20 bucks, you made good money. You know what I mean? And then, um, of course, the rest. Maybe you can play a little with them, but I would say just get rid of them because, again, Konami is not going to unban something and then not release support for that archetype. You know what I mean? Like, they, why, why would they go and unban something and then not make their cut? It just doesn't make sense. So, yeah, Thunder Dragon Colossus setting at six bucks from this tin. It's a one of though, because again, you can only actually use one. <laughs> but uh, yes, at least some other stuff in the market is going up in value in tandem with the new ban list. All right, so finishing off here with Phantom Nightmare Vetoes went up in price again. Actually, it was sitting around thirty, and then it went up to forty. Uh, about a week ago, which is crazy. I mean, I really hope for you guys that are buying this, that are investing in this, that the archetype 
doesn't suck. I think we did get, I haven't been following it too much, but I think we got all the new, um, what are they called? Ashend archetype from the next main set really uh, teased from YouTubers. But I don't know. I don't, I don't follow really anyone that opened anyone, any of the uh, product ups. I, I don't know. I think, I think I saw something on Twitter though. So again, if the archetype is good, I hope it's good enough where you're winning tournaments and shit. Otherwise, like $40 for this card, I don't know. It just ain't it. You bell the loving defender forever. $20, uh, 90 listings. It was go the listings were kind of going down and then they got repopulated. But this is a very healthy upward trend. And I mean, we gotta we we gotta talk about it, right? It's a fan favorite, it's a GX archetype. It is supporting something that people have been clamoring for. And um it's also actually pretty decent. So the the I would say this card has potential to go up a little bit more. Also, it's probably more you most decks will probably use more than one. So it's definitely worth investing or picking it up. I did. I for sure did, man. So I so we're gonna talk about the quarter century where I bought this at 80 something dollars around here. And look at that beautiful traje trajectory, man. I I saw this card and I saw and I thought, hey. I know the GX fanboys are not going to let this this pass, and thank God I did, because it just doubled in price. And I do think it could go up a little bit more, especially if we see some tournament, uh, some Ubel decks hitting those tournament scene. Also, we are getting more Ubel support in the next main set, and in the, I guess, in the Battle of Legends. We have it, we don't know for sure, but there is new Ubel support that was released in the OCG. We just don't know when we're getting into the TCG. It's most likely going to be in Brothers of Legend because that's usually what happens. But if not, hopefully relatively soon. And it's another fusion card which will help out um, in U Bell decks. So, yeah, invest in this, I would say, for sure. Low actually went down. Shorty got low, low, low for show sure, because it's, yeah, going downhill. And I don't know if it's because people are expecting um, Voiceless Voice not to do that well. But we will we will see we'll see. I don't know too much about voiceless voice, and uh, if it, if, I, I'm just saying I, I will say this: if it if it does do well, if people do find a way to make this nice and broken, this card is pretty cheap. I'll go with that because it is a three off, right? The black goat laughs. This weirdest name of 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 any card I've ever heard I've ever seen. There's no goat in this. Like I don't understand the name of this. Someone has to explain what what the the name means. Anyway, so this card has kind of seen a run-up. It actually was cheaper at a point than, than what this is alluding to. I think it was like a $5 card, like around this time frame. And now it's sitting around 13 bucks. It's a pretty decent card. So we'll read it. Declare one monster card name. This turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that original name, except from the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then de declare one monster name. This turn, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field with the original name. And then you can only use it once per turn. This card is really good. It's situational for sure. And you obviously have to know the what your opponent is playing. So maybe going second or not second, but you know, um, game two. But you definitely have you you need to know the game state and you need to know your opponent uh to play this well this card well, but it can block your opponent, especially if they need a very key card um played. I'm I'm thinking snake eyes in this actually. I mean, so it's a pretty 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 decent card to counter a very small subset of decks, I would say, but it's it, the payoff is actually pretty decent. Like you can actually win a game with this if your opponent just cannot do anything because you block them from their extender or whatever the the case may be, right? But yeah, twelve bucks is a little bit cheap. What else? What else? The um the quarter century skull guardian actually went up in price quite a bit. The the listings disappeared for a while, and people were uh, I actually listed mine for like three hundred bucks trying to sell it man but you know people relisted it unfortunately but we'll, we'll see i don't know it, it, it this one all depends on what voiceless voice do, does obviously but i've also seen a lot of people say that they like this artwork so i don't know I, i'm kind of torn on this i do think like 163 dollars is a little bit high especially if if um voiceless voice just isn't doing anything in the tournaments yes collectors are crazy yes people will buy it because it's a collector piece whatever whatever i still think it's a little too expensive or just hitting that the point where it's getting too expensive 
uh, for people to be paying $163 for the quarter century, in my opinion. Anyway, so I guess we'll end it here with Magic Spectre Orthrus because it's seen a slight spike. So 40, 49 listings. What's what's happening here? It's uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. I, I don't know exactly what people are, are uh, doing with this card, but the the fact that we're he we're getting a little bit of a, a spikeage and the listings are disappearing kind of makes me think that it's going to go up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we, we will see anyways. Uh, what do you guys think about the ban list? First of all, and then second, uh, second of all, what is, what are you guys looking at uh, in the market? Cause I want to know, there's a lot of crazy stuff. I actually didn't fit everything that I want to talk about in this market watch. So you guys, if you guys don't know, I actually sell cards and the past week after the ban list was announced, I had a surge of of people buying stuff that I haven't really seen in quite a while. And that is pretty healthy. So in all in all, I, I do think I'm critical about the ban list, but the ban list really did make the game a little bit healthier, at least in the market sense. Anyways, that's all I got. Catch you guys in the next one.